Hey everyone, my name is Max. Welcome back to another video. I wanna talk about co-hosting. It's really not something I've seen a lot of videos about. Um, me and my brother do it. Uh, for some people, we're pretty specific on who we choose, but I know a lot of co-hosts out there with a lot of cars making a lot of money. And I just wanna talk about the process of it and kinda of give people an understanding of what it is. First off, it's kind of like property management, but for cars. So you're taking people that have cars and you're renting them out for them and you're making either a percentage or a dollar amount on that. And the dollar amount or percentage is based on um, really whatever you want to charge, but there's a couple um, uh, standards for that. I've seen anywhere from like 35%. I've, seen, I've heard of a bunch of people charging 35% of the gross revenue. So if a car makes $1,000 a month, you're going to get $350. And then I've seen a lot of, or some people, I've seen, actually seen one person go up to 70%, but I'd say it hovers from 35 to 50% in that area for percentage. If you're talking about a, um, like a number fee, I usually see about $400 a month per car. And that can go up and down and you have to take into consideration, maybe you have to pay for parking or maybe you have to pay for you know, your labor. Uh, everything else typically is gonna be the person that owns the car's responsibility. Um, but let's talk about the steps in order to really fulfill this and uh, what it takes. First is you have to find the people. You have to find the person that's willing to give you their car to rent out. There's tons of ways you can do this. The first is probably your network. So for me, I talk to my family, my friends, see if there's anybody that has an extra car that they don't use or maybe they're looking to get rid of or whatever the case may be. So I try to find those people first, see if there's any cars that I can co-host and you know tell them, hey, I want to start a car rental company, or maybe you already have one, and I'd love to take your car, I'll rent it out for you, and I'll give you some money every month. And of course, you tell them the split that you're planning on doing. Uh, the, another way you could do, which I haven't even heard of people doing this, uh, but I've, I've been thinking about it a little bit, is you could probably find people that are looking to sell cars, like on uh, Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace, approach them and say, hey, I know you're selling your car, how'd you feel about making a little bit of money every month? You explain the process to them and see what they think. That's, I haven't tried that yet, but I've thought about it. So, I mean, that could be a cool idea. The next way, which is, uh, it definitely works and there's a lot of opportunity in it, is Facebook group chats. Uh, there's hosts that are maybe looking to get rid of cars or looking to uh, outsource their co-hosting. Uh, I've talked to a bunch of people that do co-hosting and they're looking to get out of it. So to like um, give their cars that they're co-hosting to somebody else, which happens so there's definitely a lot of opportunity in, in the group chats and the facebook pages there's also people that um like co-hosts that maybe don't can't or don't want to take on certain cars so they'll you know have to pass that opportunity on to somebody else and that could be you um so once you kind of have your first car and you uh you know you need to create the agreement which is the next step with the person that owns the car and yourself the company um, and I'm just gonna pull up our contract right now. It doesn't have to be anything super, super fancy. It really just has to outline um, who the individuals are. So for me, I'm a company, so it'd be my company and you, let's say you're the person with the car, individual, that's fine. Um, so uh, kind of say who the people are and then it talk about the terms, conditions and all the legal information. So I'm just gonna kind of brief over our contract. I'm not gonna read it, but I'm just gonna um, like go over the different sections. So first off, like I said, it's gonna be, uh, it explains who the people are and what they're referred to as. Uh, the second part is vehicle requirements. So typically that's gonna be based on, it's usually it's just based on like the tour requirements, which is 12 years or newer, uh, under 130,000 miles, um, clean title, that sort of thing. So you can have the requirements, the bare minimum of what Toro allows, or if you want to be in specific market, I know people that just take on luxury cars. I don't know what specifically that means because there could be a $45,000 luxury car. There could be a, a $500,000 luxury car. I know that's a big spread, but um, you know people have different requirements. So figure out what your requirements are. Uh, for us, our requirements, we don't really want to take on the bare minimum. We don't want to take on like 2013s, 2014s, uh, we want to take on newer, nicer cars with the ability to go private. That's definitely not going to be everybody's goal, uh, but that's ours specifically. Uh, the next part is maintenance, safety, and inspections. So this pretty much is talking about uh, you have to make sure that the car is like in good condition when you get it. 
and uh, the next part to it is uh, that it's safe, everything's good, like the person that owns the car is signing off that the car is in good working condition, safe condition, so if anything happens uh, and they were wrong, it's on them. Uh, the next part to it is ownership registration. So they own the car. It's under their name and everything. It's not under the company. It's not under the LLC. The only thing that they're doing is renting the car out. Um, insurance policy and stuff coverage. The owner will have the insurance under the policy. Um, and of course, you're going to have the insurance on the Turo plan. Uh, the next part is having the uh, understanding of maintenance. And this... I've heard a couple different things, but this is how we run it right now is uh, we don't do any maintenance for the guests. So if there's a problem with the car, we'll let the guests know and it's their responsibility to come pick it up and take it to go get fixed, whether that's an oil change, tires, I mean like anything. And that's probably, that's a really good system. Uh, you typically like don't want to pay for that because you could lose money every month uh, unless you're doing a percentage of net, which really isn't a good idea. But if you're just doing a set amount of money, um, and you're taking on the expenses of the like maintenance, that's a terrible idea. So, uh, you know, for us, and I would suggest you, the maintenance should 100% be on the person that owns the vehicle. Uh, the next part is um, any, any um, like expenses is gonna pass on to the guest. Um, depending on how you do it, I've heard about people that own uh, the vehicles and how them under their account and that we're actually doing this with a couple of individuals but where they own the cars under their account and they have you run them um, and then so if you have like a reimbursement like gas or something their account will get reimbursed so you need to get reimbursed from them so that you know you're not paying for like their gas and stuff when they're getting paid back uh, so we have that in there that you know we're going to get paid back for that kind of stuff tolls, smoking, uh, whatever. Um, the next part to it is uh, compliance with platform policies, which is just talking about making sure that, um, you know, it's it's eligible for the app. And if it's not, you know, we can't really co-host it anymore. Uh, the next part for ours is talking about responsibilities. So what we're responsible for doing listing the car, renting it out, making sure we handle all the customer interactions, um, all that good stuff. Uh, uh, then the rest on our contract is like um, more legal stuff, like um, making sure that it's under the right law. Uh, the last part, and this could doesn't have to be all the way down, but it could be anywhere, is putting the percentage split so we do a percentage and our split is anywhere from 35 to 45% and it varies depending on how many cars you have. Having that in there and for us, even having the different like tallies, so one to three cars is 45%, four to 10 cars is 40%, 10 plus cars is 35%, that's what we have right now. I'm not sure if it's gonna change, but having that in there, I think is really important. If you're gonna have like a setup fee, um, and there's reasons for that. Like you gotta get the car detailed, you have to take photos of the car, maybe you have to pay somebody for that. You have to get a bouncy or a tracker in the car. You have to um, like take the time to set it up on the app. There's there's tons of different things you have to do when you're getting started, but having a fee for that, I think uh, everybody that I've talked to has a fee for it. I think that's important. Um, and then really the last part of the agreement, you know, after you have all the legal stuff, uh, which you'd probably just talk to a lawyer about is the vehicle itself so like what vehicles you're co-hosting for and then of course them signing um so that's that's pretty simple i mean you could have a completely different contract but that's just what we have right now uh the next part is payouts and how payouts happen so if your if the cars are under your account of course you're going to pay out the guest based on that um, usually we just do like Zelle that's the easiest you could do checks I guess if you wanted or Vemo or something um, for the people that are have their own accounts and they pay us they just Zelle us so they t look at the monthly amount that we made take a percentage of that take our percentage of that and then they just Zelle us at the first of every month and then we send them any receipts or anything for like gas or uh, I don't know, any little things that we have to like charge them and pass through, 
Uh, we'll send that and that'll get added onto our bill at the end of every month. Um, expanding, this is kind of just talking about like how, how you can expand in this field. I think a lot of the expanding happens that I've heard um, is word of mouth. Uh, it's when you know, you're already co-hosting for a couple people and then they just tell other people or people just hear about you. I think that's probably the biggest way that um, you can expand in co-hosting. I've also heard about people uh, talking about like running ads to specific people saying like, hey, if, you're, if you have a car that's just sitting around and you're looking to rent it out or make money with it, you know, they can collect co-hosts in that way. Um, but it's, it's really kind of networking and uh, talking to other people and then it's just word of mouth because you already have co-hosting uh, with a ton of other people. Um, the next part is, this is actually really, really interesting strategy. Um, it's kind of creating co-hosting opportunities. Uh, I haven't heard of anybody that does this and this is something that we created ourselves, but essentially you find people with money. They don't have to have cars, they just have to have money and they're willing to invest it into something which would be this. Um, and you would approach them and say, hey, you know, I have this opportunity, this is what I'm thinking, and the idea is this. You take the money, let's say you have $100,000 and you're wanting to buy $20,000 cars, right? So take the $100,000, buy the cars for them, maybe you have a fee for buying them, maybe you don't, but you buy the cars for them or you tell them what cars to buy, and then with those cars, then you co-host them. So it's kind of a creative alternative uh, to finding people with money, not cars. Uh, so just kind of to say that there's a lot of opportunity in the space and what you can do. Um, there's definitely tons of different ways you can get co-hosting, but I hope you learned something about the process and how it works. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.